All right, so we're going to be starting the review for Chapter 5, which is Stereochemistry. And let's start by saying that all objects have a mirror image. And it's basically how this mirror image relates to the original object. And so if it is superimposable with the original, then the original object is a chiral. And if it is not superimposable with its mirror image, then the original and its mirror image are both chiral. For molecules, we're going to look for a chiral carbon. And remember that the chiral carbon, we want to focus on a CH, which is known as a methine, or we want to focus on quaternary carbons. And there has to be four different groups attached. We're only looking at sp3 carbons, so we're not focusing on sp2 or sp. And the other name for a chiral carbon is asymmetric carbon or sometimes you'll see stereo center. These are all interchangeable. So at this point we had talked about a flow chart in class, so let's re recreate that briefly. So the flow chart for chirality, you want to ask yourself, do I have a chiral carbon? And so if your answer to this is no, then your molecule is achiral. If your answer to this is yes, then your molecule is chiral. If you're on the left side, then you ask how many? If your answer is one, then your molecule is chiral. So if you have only one chiral carbon, your molecule must be chiral. If there are two or more, then you have to ask yourself another question, which is, do I have a symmetry plane? And this is a plane of symmetry within the molecule. And if your answer is yes, again, your molecule is chiral. If your answer is no, then your molecule is achiral. Sorry. If your answer is yes, <laughs> your molecule is achiral. And if your answer is no, your molecule is chiral. Okay. And there was a special name for this case known as meso. So meso has two or more stereocenters or chiral carbons, yet the whole molecule is achiral. And one of the tricks in this part is if you looked at a molecule and you were considering this carbon as a possibility to be the chiral carbon, if your symmetry plane cuts through the carbon that you're considering, it's automatically not a stereocenter. So this would not be a stereocenter. This would not be a chiral carbon. And if it was a chiral carbon, we put an asterisk by it. And that stands for a chiral carbon. At this point, after we learned about chirality, we learned how to assign R and S stereochemistry. So assign R and S. This was known as the con angled prelog rules. And you basically want to put the lowest priority away from your eye. So you assign one through four based on atomic number and lowest priority is away from your eye. So for cases where it may not be clear, so let's say this example,
So this is our chiral carbon. We have CH3, bromine, F, and H. And I have the model built right here. So I have H is white, bromine is blue coming out towards you, fluorine is red going away from you, and the methyl group right here is in the plane. Okay. When you assign priorities, bromine would be first, fluorine would be second, carbon would be third, and hydrogen would be last. Okay. When you make the circle here, it might not be clear what to do. So if you just have a quick model that you have stand for the molecule or the center you're looking at, you want to hold the lowest priority, which is four, and turn it away from your eye, and then assign. So this is bromine, fluorine, carbon. One, two, three, R. For cases where it's not clear, just have a quick molecule that you can build. Um, Otherwise, if you can assign one, two, three as is, you assign it, and if lowest priority is coming towards you, you do the opposite, and if lowest priority is any other direction, such as up or left, then it's best probably to build a quick molecule to check that chirality. After we talked about R and S, this led into a discussion of specific rotation. And this was known as alpha D. So specific rotation will be non-zero for chiral compounds. So will be non-zero for chiral compounds. And so we can ask ourselves, when is alpha D zero? There are three cases when this can occur. The first case could be because you have no chiral carbon to begin with, and so you're just achiral. The second case was meso, which is a special case of being achiral, where one stereocenter um, negates the other because there's a symmetry plane. And the last case is if you have a racemic mixture. And the racemic mixture meant that you had equal amounts of both enantiomers. And so basically one was R and one was S and they cancel out. If one enantiomer is in excess though, Okay, so if one enantiomer is excess, we have what's called percent EE, and this is percent enantiomeric excess, and there were two formulas in this section, and you will be given these on an exam, but you want to make sure you know how to use them. The first formula is percent EE is major minus minor over major plus minor times 100. Okay. In the second formula, I'm going to write above it. The second formula is percent EE equals the alpha D or specific rotation of the mixture over alpha D of the pure times 100. And remember that one enantiomer kind of dilutes out the other enantiomer. So if pure R is 115 degrees, pure S would be the opposite, which is negative 115 degrees. A positive is known as D, which is dextro-rotatory. And negative is L, which is levorotatory. Okay, so lowercase d and L. If we have a mixture of R and S, but we have more of the R, then our rotation is going to be in the plus direction, but it's going to be smaller than 115. For instance, 
um, if we had 60% R, we would expect a positive rotation. If we had 60% S, we would expect a negative rotation. Okay, so whichever you have more of, you'll be that direction. And you can find out the exact number using these formulas. So after the specific rotation, we talked about drawing stereoisomers. And stereoisomers were isomers that differ in space. And we had two types of stereoisomers that we learned, and they were enantiomers and diastereomers. In enantiomers, to draw enantiomers, you invert all chiral carbons or stereocenters. For instance, if both were R, you would convert both to S. And for diastereomers, you invert one or more, but not all. We learned also in this section that to know how many stereoisomers to draw, so the total number equals 2 to the n, where n is the number of chiral carbons. So if you had three chiral carbons in your molecule, you can have two to the three or eight possible stereoisomers. You should be able to draw them and tell whether each are enantiomers or diastereomers in relationship to each other. And remember that if you have meso as a possibility, it's always going to be less than this. So meso will be less than 8, but you don't know the number until you take the time to draw them. Um, and just want to point out here that enantiomers, when you invert all stereocenters, these would be mirror images of each other. But they are not superimposable. Whereas diastereomers, on the other hand, are not mere images of each other. And then the last aspect we learned in Chapter 5 was the Fisher projection. And in the Fisher projection, we basically took a molecule and looked at it so the vertical was away from the eye and the horizontal came towards the eye. Okay. And our shorthand for that is just to draw this notation where you have to keep in mind that horizontal is coming towards the eye and vertical is away from your eye. You tend to put the main chain to be vertical and you put the most oxidized carbon at the top. You assign R and S to this notation just like you did before. So let's just give this example. So bromine again would be 1, 2, carbon would be 3, and H would be 4. You assign the circle from 1, 2, 3. However, you have to keep in mind if lowest priority is horizontal, you do the opposite. Okay? So lowest priority is horizontal and do the opposite. And so it looks like R, but it's S in this case. So one last thing from chapter 5 is you need to be able to tell the relationship between isomers. Well, 
I guess instead of isomers, I should say compounds because they may not even be isomers, okay? So be able to tell the relationship between compounds. And your answers to these when two compounds are compared is enantiomers, diastereomers, they're constitutional isomers, meaning they're connected differently. It's the same compound drawn twice, or they're not isomers at all, which means they're not even the same molecular formula. Okay? And you need to be able to do this in all different drawing notations. So you could have the Newman projection, You could have the chair conformation, or you could just have the regular um, bond line drawing, or you could have Fisher.